former international pool player. She was captain of Ireland for 10 years and won the UK championship. During this time, she met her perfect partner. In 2006, I played in the World Pool Championships and we got to know each other a bit better there. When we first got together and I um, used to travel down to see Mark, um, he had a flat in the middle of Leicester and it literally had nothing in it at all. His kitchen was that clean, he obviously never used it. He didn't have pots, he didn't have anything you know so uh, we sort of every time I used to visit used to come and bring things with me it was difficult to try and focus on snooker and just like let that be all I ever wanted to do knowing I, I had the heartbreak of my mum leaving me at that time as well when I first met Mark he didn't really speak about it a lot um, but it took quite a long time for him to open up about it all um, and when he did he found it a lot easier obviously to talk about more and more um, obviously took me back to where he he was originally from, where he lived with his dad. I still always come back uh, quite often. I've been here with Vicky a few times and her parents just to show them where I was brought up and where I used to live. And it's always nice to, to see where I've come from and, and never forget your roots, really. And Mark playing left-handed, and that's why Vicky's girlfriend smiling there. 44. <laughs> She's seen it all before. And I'm sure she was there when he made that terrific comeback in Wales to beat Ronnie 47. when he was 8-5 down. What do you think? Can he do it again, Vicky? Maybe she hasn't got it. <laughs> Two more, she said. 56. I think it was fingers <laughs> crossed. <laughs> you know, she's always in the auditorium. We always see her there. Uh, is that a source of strength to you? Would you prefer that she's there watching you than not? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, if I could, obviously, financially, I'd take it to every single tournament I play in because I think majority of the time, the tournament she's gone to, I've always seemed to do well, get to the latter stages, or if not win them. I mean, when she's come to the latter stages in the Masters, uh, the UK, with her family, I've always seemed to go on and win the tournament. When she's not there, obviously, I've probably not done so well. There's Mark's wife, Vicky, in the midnight hour. You got proposed to on the Grand Canal at Venice, so he's a bit of a romantic on the quiet, eh? Yeah. <laughs> And he can't swim either. <laughs> oh. So getting down on one knee on a gondola was pretty impressive. I can swim depths, but I can't do lengths. Well, it was one of the best days of my life, so we had a fantastic time there. It was so busy, I was sort of getting more and more nervous, and I thought, well, it's either now or never. So I managed to pluck up the courage and do it, and, and thankfully she said yes. How does it work? Because you have a husband and wife relationship and you have a business relationship. Um, how do the two of them coexist, Mark? Well, it's difficult. I mean, obviously, with Vicky playing pool and experience Q Sport as well, she sort of understands the work I need to put in for what I need to get out, which is obviously great. So she's always, always behind me, giving me the encouragement to get to the club or kicking me out of the house to go and practice and always willing me on at tournaments and being there and supporting me. Easy. When I get back home, sometimes it's difficult because if I'm going through bad patches, sometimes I bring my work home with me, which is not fair on Vicky, obviously. But she's always there and she's like a rock to me. We do play a little bit, or if the family comes, you know, we'll have a game of killer and it's just a nice social, social thing to have. If he gets beat, I'll probably give him a best of nine and then let him win so he gets his confidence back. <laughs> uh, I woke up one morning, uh, gone to get out of bed and I felt a... Uh, a really bad sharp pain in, in the back of my shoulder. I went downstairs for a practice and I could, couldn't physically get down on my cue. He was very down, you know, it's as if he went into his own little world. And then I had an MRI scan and uh, they said that I had a, a disc bulge in between C5 and C6, which was really, really painful. And uh, at the time I didn't know whether it was I was ever going to play snooker again. Snooker's all he knows, so for him to think that he's not going to be able to play that anymore and probably not fulfil all his potential well to come back from an injury it's very very difficult because I mean a, a few players uh, have suffered with injuries and, and they never really recover but that's down to the resilience again of the of, of the player and the man and of course is uh, 
the support he has from his, his wife Vicky. I mean, Vicky was great, to be honest, as she always is. I mean, wh when I was there, I was like doing all, all my different stretches, which the physio told me to do, and, and Vicky was always trying to keep me positive. I went into the World Championships, and I think I played Barry Orkin's first round. It was really hard, especially I remember there was a couple of comments in the crowd, obviously about the way he was playing, and it, it was hard for me to listen to because I knew what he was going through sort of the last few months. Vicky, you're, you're sort of used to this thing. Obviously, Mark's been one of the top players for quite a while. Does it get any easier? No, not at all. I'm actually really shocked to be here. I thought, obviously, he was going to go out twice, obviously, 4 nil down against Neil. I was really shocked for him to come back. It's probably the first time I've ever thought he's got a massive hill to climb here. But, yeah, just really chuffed to be here. Has he been under a little bit more extra pressure this year, do you think, the fact he's been trying to get back to number one? Uh, I don't think, no, not trying to get back to number one. I think uh, with his neck injury, obviously, oh, set him back yeah. a, you know, a lot and uh, knocked his confidence a lot. So it's just nice to see him in a final. Vicky, you, you're welcome any time, definitely. I think it's only appropriate that Vicky should share in this as well. Vicky, you've always said that it's tough to watch this man, but what kind of satisfaction do you take from all of the trials and tribulations of the last few months? He's here, he's the world number one, he's a UK champion. I just can't believe it. I mean, obviously, after everything we've been through this year, it's just, oh, as you can see, I'm in bits. <laughs> So embarrassing. <laughs> Not at all. It's lovely to see the two of you celebrating. Your champion, Mr. Mark Selby. Well done, Mark. Thank you. I'm probably, in total, I've probably spent six months, I suppose, if you do it day after day, uh, with the snooker calendar being so busy. I, it always seems like a holiday being back home, really, than obviously my own home. As soon as he comes home, we just... Uh put our onesies on, <laughs> get veg in front of the TV, just catch up with what he's been up to and what I've been up to and then just go for nice meals and have a few drinks and yeah, just have a good, have a good laugh really. This place seems like a world away I have to say, you're right in beautiful countryside, you've got a lovely back garden, it all seems so tranquil. The village is fantastic, we've been here two years, it's got no shop, no pub, which is great because the people who come through are only just passing trade or people who are coming to visit the people who live here. As far as the swimming pool goes, no, Vicky goes in there a lot, but I mean, I can't swim, so it's no value to me. Do you know, we spoke about it for so many years, and you know, obviously every time a, a world champion comes past, it's another year that he's not done it. So for him to do it this year, and obviously to dedicate it to his father, which was, well, the dream come true for him, and yeah, just really, really proud of him. Yeah, I mean, it felt amazing. It still didn't really sink in until a few weeks after uh, when I was getting home and Vicky kept playing the, just kept playing it back there, watching the clearance yet again. 22. If somebody's got something in their life that all of a sudden gives them even more of a purpose um, and in a way takes the pressure off the actual personal winning but makes it more of a team effort. If you can play for somebody else, if you feel like you're part of a team, I think to some degree it's easier to, to play snooker and win. More or less just back to life as normal. I went to Vicky's parents and sort of like seen everyone there and everyone was coming around to mine celebrating and stuff so uh, which was nice i had a, a party which vicky put on for me at the leicester city football club in in june uh, for all my friends and family to come just to to say thank you for their support over the years and stuff which was nice so it was good as we speak now you're expecting um that'll be an interesting experience from becoming a dad <laughs> it will yes yeah. so we're just five weeks away so yeah it's all very exciting at the moment we can't wait now I thought winning the World Championships was the best feeling of my life, but I mean, being there in theatre when my, my daughter arrived, uh, don't come nowhere near really. That's definitely the best feeling I've ever had. Uh, and like I say, she's doing well at the moment, Vicky's doing well, sleeping better as, as it goes on, but uh, yeah, it's all good. Well, there's Sophia stealing the show out there, as usual. <laughs> Family comes first, it should come first in anything. I mean, snooker, I've done well in my career and 
still enjoying it as much now as what I did do before. But if anything, it gives me more of a motivation to try and do better now, to try and give Sophia a better life as well. Ladies and gentlemen, what an epic final. Off the table over the years, I've like, had a, quite a tough upbringing with my father passing away when I was really young. And uh, just a lot of things off the table, which has not been really been happy with, but then getting with Vicky obviously was a, a great thing, and she's a great person. She's pretty unique, you know. She must be one of the very, very few partners in sport who really does understand exactly what you're going through, because she's been there herself. As far as Paul goes, she's won more or less every single tournament apart from the Ladies World Championship. So she sort of, like I said before, she knows obviously what it takes to get to the top and what you have to do. So in that way, I mean, it's, it's obviously great. And I think that's why we're so close and that's why we work. Very kind, very generous. Um, got a lot of time for everybody he meets and just a genuinely lovely guy. This is a man's, man's, man's world. And it wouldn't be nothing. Not a woman on her bed. This is a man's world. But it wouldn't be nothing, nothing, not one little thing without a woman on her bed.